This video is sponsored by Skillshare. <laughs> Man, I wish I had an optical viewfinder. Wait a minute, what's that? Ah, oh yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, Sammy here. Welcome back to another video. Today I have a very sad announcement for Rico. I switched back to Fuji. Sorry guys, I just had to. I mean, look at this design. It's so sleek and stylish and the optical viewfinder. Yeah, just gotta have an optical viewfinder. And look at this, tilt flippy screen. This is needed. Yeah, this is a street camera, not this piece of... <laughs> Of course, I'm joking, guys. I still am a Ricoh ambassador. I have my GI here. But today, uh, I have the chance to use this camera. Never tried it before. So whenever people ask me, should I get the GS3 or this camera? I was always saying, yeah, I don't know. It depends on you because I don't have experience using this camera. But today, I'm going to take some pictures and uh, I see you around some other corner and then we discuss the details oh yeah specs i'm not going to talk about specs here you can look them up yourself and yeah see you later hmm <laughs> this is kind of nice my sean tucker senses are tingling i think i have to get it shot here Oh yeah, oh yeah. Take visual notes, take visual notes. <laughs> but this is actually very nice. <laughs> I just discovered uh, one thing that is a little bit annoying. Um, I often touch the joystick by accident and then the uh, focus point is shifted and I always have to bring it back. There's probably a way to uh, lock it, but now, um, Almost every time I waste my camera, I, I have to correct the focusing point. It's a little bit annoying. Give me a little, give me a little smile, come on. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's quickly talk about the changes um, from the X100F to this camera, the X100V. Uh, what you will notice first is just the more sleek design. I really like the sharp edges here and the buttons are a little bit more compact and tight and then we have the new ISO dial which lift, lifts up and then it stays up so you can use your uh, pointing finger to change it and that is so much nicer than the X100F. Yeah, same, same. Sorry, but I'm gonna get my band dirty. <laughs> <laughs> the front and back wheels feel more tactile and the aperture ring does also feel clickier. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word. Uh, yeah, overall I really dig the design. I'm also a fan of removing the D-pad. I got really used to using the joystick, um, so it makes it look a little bit more minimal. Uh, let's talk about the OVF, because um, on this one, the OVF is definitely brighter and bigger. So what was happened on the x one f was that the parallax correction wasn't that great. So whenever you framed your photo, the final result was always a little off. But on this one, uh, for example, I have Jay here in the middle of the frame. I take a picture and I when I look back, it is actually very close to how I saw it. And that was something I always felt was lacking on the X100F. I enjoy using an optical viewfinder, but I didn't enjoy it on the X100F. But on the V, uh, I think I would mainly use the opti uh, optical viewfinder because now it does give you the benefit of you know, seeing the real world having no um, blackout, so I can continue taking photos. So yeah, thumbs up for you, Fuji. Man, it's just really nice having an optical viewfinder. I don't know if my exposure is right, but I don't care, I'm in auto mode. But I care about the right moment, right? So optical viewfinder, um, 
gives me nothing in between. So it's all up to me. And the focus point shifted again. <laughs> Remember my uh, video with Jeremy Cesar? Cesar? <laughs> we shot uh, this building. So just wanted to show you guys because we used the X100F at that time. This is the first good one of the day. <laughs> Getting in the zone, man. Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, film simulations. Uh, obviously, we have a new film simulation, classic. Is it? Cla yeah, it's classic negative. Okay, here's my opinion. I don't like it. It doesn't really look like film to me. It looks kind of like a preset you can you buy online. You know, some. Nah, nah. Some people really like it. I can see why. It is the most uh, film-like. Wait, I'm contradicting myself. <laughs> it is for most people. It's the most film-like film simulation. But for me, I don't like how the shadow is tinted. Uh, it's it's. Uh, yeah, I don't like it. Well, what I do is I use uh, classic chrome, plus two on saturation, zero on highlights, and minus one on shadows. So I can show you here. I take a quick photo. So yeah, I'm going to use classic chrome. The other one I like is Provia with less saturation. The rest, a Turner's great for video. You're watching it right now. A classic neck. Yeah, try harder, Fuji. Try harder. <laughs> no one can beat the. No, that's it. We should, we'll talk later. <laughs> See, it shifted again. Are you still rolling? Yeah. Man, I'm getting very angry at this camera. I, I like the experience, but why is this focusing point always shifting? And now. Check the menu. You have, there has I to be locked it the menu. and it shifted. Now I have to unlock it so I can put it back in the middle, wait for it to lock it again. So I now finally know how to uh, lock the focusing point. I have to go under the wrench icon, button and dials and then focus lever settings. And then I have to go to push to unlock. And then it is locked. Oh, it's gone. I don't see it anymore. Is that correct? Yeah, I think it just... Oh, did. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's focusing. Yeah, it's not shifting the focus, but once I press it down, uh, it will be unlocked again. And then I have to go back into the settings to lock it again. So, what is this shit? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, so frustrating. Uh, we just realized uh, I could probably just go into the menu and do uh, lock instead of push to unlock. It should be then locked even if I press the joystick. Yeah, and it's now locked. It's locked now? Yeah, it's locked. Okay, I'm now going to uh, test out the flippy screen and we will do some low angle shooting. But for that, I have to go into the menu again to switch the screen, uh, switch to the screen, to the LCD. But I can't see the menu unless I do this. So <laughs> let me go into the menu. Screen setup, view mode settings, uh, shooting set to, let's do eye sensor. So now my LCD is on and I can use the viewfinder if I want to. Oh my God. The focusing point shifted again. <laughs> it is now one step up. Ah, I will give up. So I will use the screen now. Do you notice me? Can you notice me? Am I invisible now? Anna? No? <laughs> okay, this is really nice. Uh, if you have your thumb on your shutter button and then hold your camera like this, like having, almost like having a twin reflex camera, or, you know, where you look down, it is very satisfying. Like seeing everything here and then it's not on eye level but it is you know on hip level and some people pre prefer to have that uh, point of view it's definitely a more sneaky way of taking photos but um, it does work very well so yeah Rico if you're watching when do we get this screen <laughs> we need this please make this screen come up from from the bottom so that we have a 
hip shooting possibilities. Because shooting from the hip without looking at the screen is weird. It feels, it feels sneaky if I do this, right? But if I do this and I look at the screen, it's not really hip shooting. It is, you still can frame the, the shot. And even here, it's a, it's a less intimidating um, action than doing this, right? So this is like, boom, I'm going to get you. But this is like, maybe I'm just checking my settings. <laughs> so yeah, it's nice. Who's that stalker? Why are you looking at me? <laughs> I'm talking to myself. Talking to myself. Oh, the smell of M&Ms. Can you smell it? <laughs> Welcome to Piccadilly Circus in 2020. Where are the people? Where are they? Many people crowded together, so it's more obvious when you take a photo. It's harder to get close, but it definitely helps having this uh, flip up screen. Because I was able to, um, as you saw, maybe go down to the pigeon and then have the other guy still in the frame or pretend like I'm, you know, filming. And then, um, yeah, it's definitely nice. Cheers, mates. Don't forget to treat yourself. Seat photography should be fun, so drink and get fat like me. <laughs> Don't rush, Samuel. You'll spoil your dinner. Oh. <laughs> Intermittent fasting. What? <laughs> what? Putting on weight during the quarantine. <laughs> hey, this year is shitty, shitty enough. <laughs> we should treat ourselves. Eat and drink like there's no tomorrow. Fuck intermittent fasting. Eat. Yes, it's sir, intermittent baby. eating. Intermittent. <laughs> I'm, I'm recording on the x v right now okay. using classic negative and it looks kind of nice. From 4K? 4K, or? yeah. Continuous AF. Is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, I will do this with other uh, film simulations so people can see how it looks like. This is Pro VR. Still and continuous? Yeah. So if I go here, it would be an amazing video camera if it would have uh, IBIS. I'm, I'm shooting wide open. This is Velvia, but I'm on the hundreds of a second because I want that wide open look. So the, your movement is a little bit choppy, but whatever. <laughs> so this is Astia. How's the microphone? <laughs> yeah, that looks nice. Classic chrome, a little desaturated. Really? Yeah. So this is Pro Neck High. Now we are on a turn, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Just a little flat, but okay. I will now grade this footage. So this is how it, I, I would grade it. And it does probably look like my XH1. I shot in a couple weeks ago, I shot a turn of Fujifilm. Yeah. The actual film. Ah. It was expired, so I was shooting it at fucking 75 ISO. What? Shoot, so I had to shoot everything wide open at f2.8. Mm. And I'm manually focusing on f2.8. So we are now on Acros with yellow filter on. Oh yeah, Acros baby. <laughs> <laughs> but the AF is nice. At one point, I want to do a video shooting it all on Acros. Could uh, look pretty yeah, nice. I, wanted, I was thinking of doing something yeah. like that too. 
Okay, so I took a couple of photos and so far the experience is very nice. I enjoy using the X100V, but when I want to switch to manual focusing and use zone focusing, I'm a little unsatisfied, obviously because we have <laughs> obviously because we have uh, focus by wire it's not a true manual focusing lens no distance scale you get a distance scale on the back of the camera on the display and in the viewfinder but it, it is actually way off so we will now test focusing the distance using a real manual focusing camera must be nice <laughs> Oh yeah, this is nice. Pop mm. that baby in zone focus. Yep. Mm -hmm. So well, let's, let's just say... stand side by side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's it's better if you do because if you do a distance that's like ten meters, fifteen meters, that it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. It's more crucial when you're up close. Okay. What about it, this then? Let's stand here. Let's stand here. Okay, so I will post it like here. So here, this is our target. So let's do the um, the little silver knob. Ah, okay, okay. So we will focus on this one. How about I just do them both? Hmm? Up to my eye and up to the eye here. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, bro. Oh, wait, but there's no focus in patch. How the fuck do I do this? No, use, uh, now it's set on manual so we can see the distance scale, so you have to use back button focusing. To do what? To focus in the middle. Oh. Okay. It's actually about the same. What? Yeah. So what does it say on the X100V? Uh, it's like 3.1-ish, and okay. on mine, it's about the same. What? Yeah, earlier it wasn't. It was way off. Damn! <laughs> so the, the distance scale, it seems correct. Let me do uh, this again. But, who gives a fuck if you can't really use it? <laughs> and if it's no fun to use, you know what I'm saying? So like, the distance is correct, but who's actually... Is it really? It is. So, so we tested that earlier and it was definitely off when we tested it first, so that's weird. But again, how would I even use the focus? I no, you have to use AF. Uh, no, no. Yeah, of course, I know what you mean. If you're focusing, you don't see... Yeah, so I put it in the, um, the little optical viewfinder in the corner. Yeah. Nah, it's... It's too annoying because I'm trying to get the square, the center of the frame where I want you and then I have to take my eye into the corner and to see if it's in focus. That's why the focus patch is perfect because it's in the fucking middle, you know? Yeah. And then I have to get the square in the middle and then look to the side to see if it's in focus. So I'm trying to look at two images simultaneously. And it just, to be honest, it doesn't work. So, in, so in, you your, can't, in your humble, honest opinion, uh, being like a M6 user... Hey, I actually, hold on. Yeah. I used to, used to be a Fujifilm fanboy. Yeah. At one time, this is embarrassing to say, I owned a Fujifilm X-T2, X-Pro2, X-100F, X70 and X-T2. I sold them all. <laughs> but um, what I would say this is, this is like really good fast food. <laughs> like an in and out burger. Yeah. But once you experience a proper like steak or proper meal, which is with a whole dining experience, can't go back to this personally but people can eat awesome fast food all day that's hey they love that shit yeah. but for me in terms of the actual experience there's no real experience with this for me this you actually you have to learn this mm. and it's really hard to kind of master but once you kind of get to that level there's no going back at all.
like if you gave me this right now I'd be like I don't even want to take a single image with it to be honest because it's just it's not fun for me personally get this sound in there. Hmm. All right, it's conclusion time. So here are my honest thoughts about the X100V and what I like about it. And uh, how does it compare against the Ricoh GR3? So I think uh, it is a good camera and... Hmm? Who's that? Yeah? Bills? What bills? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, let me pay you right now. Okay. All right, yeah. Cheers, mate. Do you guys ever heard about Skillshare? If you never heard of Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes ranging from photography, filmmaking, animation, creative writing, music production, business, freelance and marketing. If there's anything you want to learn, there's probably a class for that on Skillshare. Here's a class I really like from Ali Abdal. It's called Productivity Masterclass, Principle and Tools to Boost Your Productivity. And I don't think I have problems being productive. I mean, I filmed nine videos during my seven days here in London, for God's sake. But his class made me realize why I'm doing the things I'm doing and why I sometimes have these ups and downs. And that ties in into lesson number 13, the fun factor, where Ali is giving a few tips on how to switch your perspective. For example, instead of saying, I have to do something. Try saying, I get to do this. And I think that is very powerful stuff. The premium membership gives you access to all the classes and costs less than $10 a month. So if you want to try it out yourself, there's actually a link in the description that gives you two months of premium membership for free. So check it out and learn some new skills. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So here's what I think about the Exxon and V and there's not much I can add to the discussion. By now you probably have seen, you know, a thousand reviews already. This camera has been on the market for a while now. And um, in my personal opinion, I think this is the best value street photography camera you can get on the market today. Uh, you get a fully weather sealed uh, camera, uh, as long as you put on a UV filter, that is. Um, fixed 35 millimeter prime, sharp lens, full manual controls. You get the flippy screen, which is awesome. Uh, the camera's fairly compact. It does feel nice. Optical viewfinder, amazing. I love it. Um, it all comes down to your personal preference. For example, for me, I still prefer my Ricoh GR3. Shit, I don't have it in my pocket. <laughs> so again, like I was saying, um, me personally, I prefer the Ricoh GR3 still because I'm a 28 mm shooter and I found out by using the Exxon and F with the wide angle conversion lens, which gave me a 28 mm full frame equivalent. And I realized 35 millimeter is not really for me. I enjoy it, but I much prefer 28. So for me, it's a question of focal length. And then, you know, look at how tiny this is. So for me, this is just more convenient. I don't really need the viewfinder. It's nice to have, but as you guys know, or some of you, I already have the full manual focus experience uh, using my Minolta CLE and the 28 millimeter lens, I can do my zone focusing. So this camera cannot really be replaced um, by the X100V. But that being said, for people who are looking for just one street camera, yeah, get the X100V. It's amazing. I, I actually am very surprised how much um, they updated this camera. Uh, it's it's almost perfect now. I, Except that little bug with the focusing um, point, but we fixed that. Uh, battery life seems to be very good. I didn't really talk about image quality, <laughs> but this is also the first time shooting it, so I haven't seen the photos yet. So I will uh, pre-record my reaction so, and show you a little slideshow. And then after that, you will get a thumbs up or this or that. So let's play the slideshow.
are okay, but is it better than the X100F or this one? Not by much. So, a uh, big shout out to Leo Orlando Galang. He lent me this camera today, so I didn't buy this for myself in case you thought this is mine. To be honest, if someone would give me this camera, I would definitely use it. Would I buy it? No. Um, and Rico wouldn't like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just a GR shooter by heart. I love the GR. It's convenient for me. I can put it in my pocket. And this one, you still need a strap or have a bag. Um, but if that's your only camera, man, you can shoot so much. Um, the sky is the limit, as they say. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little first impression video. Uh, shout out to Jay for filming. Thank you so much for helping, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I need to answer the final question. Should you get the X100V or the GR3? Can you zoom in to my face? Get the Ricoh GR3. <laughs> Not biased at all. <laughs> uh, Fuji, you suck. <laughs> Why didn't you send me this camera when it came out? I wanted to test it. I'm very disappointed in you guys, Fuji guys. So for all of you guys who messaged me and asked me which camera I should get, guys, let's be honest, it doesn't matter if you use this camera or this camera or even this camera. Uh, every camera we have nowadays are good enough for street photography. So it doesn't really matter. If you have the money for this camera, go for it. If you want to save a little bit of money, you can get this one. It doesn't really matter. You can even get the X100F or the X100S. Again, shout out to Leo. He's still using the X100S. Okay, now he has this one, but he can use the X100S. So it doesn't really matter. So uh, get any camera that creates photos that are decent enough and stop stressing about gear. Go back to film shooting. If you're like Jay and you want to be the pre purist and be like, I can guess the distance of five meter. Oh, I was correct. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a camera for everyone out there. So hopefully this will be my last video on, on this camera and the only one and it, it answered your questions. I'm not going back to Fuji. Uh, so yeah, it's your loss Fuji, not mine. <laughs> so thanks for watching and I see you in another video very soon. Nice. That one felt good. Huh? That one felt good. Yeah, yeah. I was able to zoom in at the right moment. <laughs> I saw that. Especially when okay, you said, you're lost, Fuji. I had it zoomed <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah. So that was a good, good timing. Yeah. Time to eat for me. Yeah, yo.